very good evening, friends. Let me at the outset express my gratitude to All India Agricultural Students Association for uh, inviting me to give this live talk. And uh, it's indeed a matter of great pleasure for me when I looked at the, uh, the size of this family that has grown to um, uh, almost one lakh uh, plus, which is uh, something that uh, many of us in the field of agriculture were not aware of. And this is a critical human resource and mass that can be utilized very effectively in uh, dissemination of technology information related to agriculture, particularly uh, in a situation like uh, we are going through under lockdown and how agriculture is affected because of lockdown each one of you are located in uh, many uh, of you in the remote uh, areas, in the villages. And uh, the messages which are being given by different uh, institutions, including Indian Council of Agriculture Research, can be effectively disseminated using this uh, as an effective tool. Uh, but as far as today's interaction is concerned, as for uh, the disseminated uh, and uh, the topic that has been circulated to you, I am uh, basically going to talk to you about uh, the impact of Basmati revolution on uh, uh, enhancing the quality of life of millions of uh, farmers and uh, forex earning by the government, uh, which is one of the, the Basmati is one of the largest contributor to foreign exchange earning uh, from India. As I said earlier, if you talk someone from West Bengal for him, the uh, the best quality rice would be Govindu Bhog or Randuni Pagal. Uh, likewise, from Maharashtra, Ambe Mohar, you have from uh, Eastern Uttar Pradesh, Kala Namak, Basa Bhog, Basa Prasan, uh, and so on. So each and every state of, uh, uh, good evening, Amit, Asmit, and uh, each and every state of uh, India has got uh, specialty rices, which are short grain aromatic rices but they do not come in the category of basmati rice. They are also equally important and many of them actually have been protected under geographical indication. For example, Kala Namak from Eastern Uttar Pradesh is protected under geographical indication and each one of these uh, hold uh, almost the same potential as far as exploiting exports are concerned. But our today's uh, talk is uh, mainly focused on improvement of basmati rice, the journey of basmati a revolution which is a silent revolution, but uh, in fact, it has made a big impact on, uh, on okay. So it has made a big uh, impact on farmers' livelihood security and also on the uh, foreign exchange earning by the government. Basmati rice is one of the greatest contributor among the agricultural commodity. Uh, so when we talk of uh, Basmati, it's a nature's gift to Indian subcontinent, the two countries together, India and Pakistan. They uh, own the Basmati rice. And uh, I will talk of the geographical indication on Basmati rice in little detail at a later stage. Right now, I'm going to focus on the genetic improvement of Basmati rice through research, how it has been done. Uh, so the traditional varieties of Basmati rice, like type 3, uh, Traori Basmati, Basmati 370. Uh, these uh, are pretty tall in height, about 160, 170 centimeter. They are photo period sensitive. That means whenever you plant them, they will come to flowering only when it is first week of October. Uh, and therefore, uh, generally because of being photo period sensitivity, their duration is very long, about 160 days seed to seed maturity. And in current context, when you find that there is a big problem of uh, rice distra burning, uh, any variety of rice which is beyond 130 days, uh, it uh, creates problem for timely sowing of wheat. So if a variety matures in first week of November, farmers have no option than to put fire to paddy straw before they can take up wheat sowing. And therefore, intensive focus is required on developing varieties uh, which are about 130 days seed to seed maturity so that you can address the problem of uh, parali or distra uh, burning. Good evening, Sunil and uh, Neeraj and Rag. Uh, welcome you all. And uh, therefore, you know, realizing this uh, very important uh, factor 
Uh, in uh, late 60s, 67, 68, uh, Dr. Swaminathan, when he was director of the Indian Agriculture Research Institute, uh, he conceptualized the idea of uh, combining the quality of traditional basmati rice varieties into high-yielding background. And uh, by that time, you know, the rice revolution and wheat revolution in terms of uh, exploitation of dwarfing genes like DG Ugen in rice, and uh, nor in tendon wheat had taken place. And Dr. Swaminathan thought that if we can incorporate the same dwarfing gene in traditional varieties of basmati rice, but without compromising quality, then we can enhance the productivity and uh, quality together, and that will have a big national impact. So uh, the first cross of a traditional variety of basmati rice type 3 and 370 was made with some of the non-Bashmati dwarf varieties. And uh, it was, uh, uh, it, it took almost 20 years of hard work and uh, several generations of uh, what in plant breeding we call, I will not go too technical because this group is very diverse. There are people from all different disciplines, so I'll try to be as simple as possible. But uh, since Basmati character is very complex trait, so the first challenge for us was to understand the genetics of Basmati character. And once we understand the genetics, then uh, breeding would become easy. So the various characters which determine Basmati quality are grain length. Uh, and the grain length should be uh, 6.7 millimeter and above con of mill rice. It should not be less than that. The second important factor that on cooking, the rice should elongate twice in length. So from 6.7 millimeter, it should become around uh, 14 to 15 millimeter or more. Third important point is that it should have high volume expansion. So you cook a small quantity of rice and then you are able to make a large volume. Uh, and the meaning thereby that you can serve many plates. And that's why, you know, some of our variety which have got very high volume expansion, almost 4.5 times of the initial volume of rice when it is cooked. Uh, that uh, with limited quantity of rice, you can serve many plates and hotelier, uh, particularly they find it very uh, remunerative. So high volume expansion is another important point. And then uh, on cooking, the rice should be very fluffy. It should not stick with each other. Now, this property of uh, stickiness is brought about by the uh, amylose and amylopectin proportion in rice. That's the carbohydrate component. And uh, generally, a, a variety that has amylose about 22%, that's the desirable uh, amylose level when the varieties are uh, fluffy, they will not stick with each other. But if you go on reducing the amylose content uh, below 20%, the rice will tend to become very sticky. I, uh, I am sure some of you would have watched a couple of videos, some, uh, I think, a year back when there was uh, a lot of talk about plastic rice. And people would make uh, balls of rice, cooked rice, and then they will put it on the surface, and it will have a buoyancy. It will come up, and then they'll say that if it is true rice, it will not uh, jump on the surface. Uh, but, you know, this property, then these people from ABP News asked that they came to me and they wanted to have my opinion when I clarified in my lab, uh, taking rice of different amylose content. So if you have rice of less than 5% amylose content, it makes a ball which is very sticky, it will never jump. But if you take amylose content of 25%, 22%, then this will jump 3-4 times. So it was nothing to do with plastic rice, but properties of amylose that rice has, which makes rice sticky and whether the ball jumps or not. So now coming back to the point that the ideal amylose content of these varieties is 22%. Uh, uh, that is the best. And when it will not be sticky, it will be very fluffy. And then the most important parameter is that uh, uh, it, it should have uh, what is called uh, a very high uh, pleasant uh, aroma. So uh, these are certain characters, five, six characters uh, that I described just now, which make a rice as basmati rice. Now, in addition to this, the rice must be grown in a specified geographical area because uh, one of the important factors that contributes to quality of basmati rice is the temperature at the time of grain filling. When the grain filling temperatures are mild, uh, there is a very good development of aroma in the rice grain. 
so uh, if the temperatures are high then aroma will not develop because aroma is because of a volatile compound called 2 acetyl one pyroline and at high temperature it will have tendency to get volatilized in the atmosphere and you will have less accumulation of aroma in the grains so uh, a ideal temperature is also essentially required for the best expression of quality trade and this is the primary region why basmati rice has been protected under geographical indication i will discuss that later because it's uh, more science come you know the lot of politics issue involved in that i will come back to that later so uh, when we started this program i started 1967 and i must uh, acknowledge uh, the initiative of Professor M. Swaminathan who is, is still uh, very very active and keeps in uh, touch uh, he will drop at least one or two mails to me every month inquiring about what is happening to agriculture what is the new development and so on and so forth uh, till last uh, year he has been frequently visiting every year at least two three times uh, but now he has some uh, issue with his mobility uh, but he keeps in uh, touch so and keeps inspiring that's a great uh, thing you know at the age of 95 he will be completing in coming august but he's still very active and keeps inspiring us for newer uh, development in science so when we started this program uh, dr e a siddiq who retired as a national professor and ddg crop sciences was his first uh, uh, student uh, in phd program and he took up this uh, program, research program. He studied the genetics of basmati characters and then breeding program was initiated. Later, Dr. V.P. Singh, who is uh, awarded with Padma Sri, and Dr. Siddiq also was awarded Padma Sri for the outstanding work on basmati rice. Dr. V.P. Singh joined, and then Dr. F. U. Zaman. So this was the team, which is a very comprehensive team that built a very strong base for our breeding program. Uh, good evening, uh, Sunil and uh, Neeraj. And uh, this, uh, you know, uh, hard work led to development of first ever dwarf high yielding variety of basmati rice. We call it as Pusa Basmati 1. It was released in 1989. So it took almost 20 years of hard work to come out with the first semi dwarf high yielding basmati rice variety. If you compare the duration of uh, Pusa Basmati 1 was 135 days uh, against 160 days in traditional varieties. The yield of Pusa Vashmati 1 was almost 60 quintals per hectare as against 25 quintals per hectare in the traditional varieties of Vashmati rice. So this was the uh, uh, revolution that happened. The farmers, uh, the Pusa Vashmati 1 was characterized by uh, presence of ants on the grain and therefore the farmers recognized and knew this variety. Uh, even now they call it as Muchal. Muchal because it has got uh, the ants on the grain. Muchal is like uh, mostage, having mostage. So that's how farmer call it as Muchal variety, very popularly. And this variety, uh, you know, brought a revolution. I know many farmers uh, whose uh, complete perspective was changed. Yeah, that was a time in uh, 90s, late 90s, 97, 98, and so on, uh, that the farmers uh, would have a slogan on their car. Um, and on the tractor trolley and they will call it as uh, Karja Khad Basmati. So Karja is uh, depth and this variety produced enough grain and enough profit for the farmers that they were freed of all the depth that they were in. So that was the impact of Pusha Basmati 1. Uh, but uh, with the large area under cultivation of this variety, slowly you know we know a term in plant breeding that is called boom and worst cycle so if you take a balloon and if you blow the balloon put a lot of air yes asis uh, are you saying participants can put questions sure sure okay i am not able to see uh, yeah all right oh dr nk singh is also there <laughs> one of the uh, you know, the, the great uh, admirer um, of him, I am, and uh, he has been a great supporter to our entire uh, breeding program. I can see many, many more people joining, and uh, I can certainly take uh, questions uh, and uh, comments if they are there. Sunil, 
There is some doubt regarding Jaya rice variety cultivated in Kerala. Jaya was released as the first rice variety under ICRIP. Whether both are same or different. Uh, so Jaya is a non-Basmati variety. It was uh, developed by uh, Dr. Sastri, SBS Sastri and his colleague. Uh, the initial crosses were made at uh, Central Rice Research Institute, uh, Qatar. So Jaya is very, very different than uh, what we are talking about today. Jaya is a non-aromatic coarse grain variety, which is very high yielding. It was very much, uh, you know, the time when IR8 was developed by uh, crossing uh, PETA and uh, type 141. Uh, same time, you know, this variety Jaya was uh, also developed. And uh, uh, this this is, uh, is still a variety which is under cultivation, although developed in 1968, it was released. And even now, if you look at the breeder seed indent, there is a good indent that comes from uh, Jaya. I hope your question is answered. If not, then please, uh, Ask me uh, again. Okay, how do you see this question? Good evening. This talk will surely help agriculture students all over India during COVID lockdown. Great. Oh, Prala is also there, one of our colleagues. Uh, we have a great team of rice uh, breeding uh, program at IRI now. Uh, that's all. I am supported by uh, Dr. Gopalakrishnan, then we have Dr. Um, Nagarajan and Dr. Vinod, uh, they were located recently at our regional station in Aduturai because uh, that's an off-season nursery. We grow two crops, one crop in Delhi, and then from December to April, we go to Aduturai, and then we have uh, Ranjit, Harita. Uh, um, uh, these are the people who are in the group uh, very intensively working in different areas. So uh, coming back to... Uh, Don't worry, Avi Karbati. I think there is some questions, right? So, Pusa Basmati one I was talking about, it was uh, described by farmers as Kaja Far Basmati, and I was talking about the boom and burst cycle. So, if, uh, if you take a balloon and blow it, and if the air is beyond the elasticity of the balloon, the balloon is burst. And likewise, when you grow a new variety, initially the area is less, but as the area under cultivation goes on increasing, and it reaches a very large contiguous uh, planting of the same variety over large area, then uh, the disease uh, comes and uh, in, in a large area. And that's why, uh, you know, what happened with Pusa Vashmati 1, that it became highly susceptible to bacterial leaf blight uh, caused by pathogen, bacterial pathogen gen from monastic capacitors. And uh, because of this, the variety, the farmers, they had uh, a problem in cultivation. Uh, we started breeding program on this uh, to in improve it for resistance to bacterial blight. I will come to that later. The, the next breakthrough in Basmati rice breeding happened in 2003 when we came out with the variety called Pusa Basmati 1121, 1121. And uh, this variety was released in 2003 by Delhi State and it uh, went on to become a mega variety. Currently, it is cultivated in almost uh, 1 million hectare area. The total area under cultivation of basmati rice is about uh, 2 million hectare. Out of that, 1 million hectare is planted to Pusa Basmati 1121. Our annual production of milled basmati rice is uh, around 8 million tons. Of that, roughly 4.5 million tons is exported. Uh, and the major destinations are uh, uh, Middle East, uh, United States, and European Union. And the total export earning from the Basmati rice is 33,000 crores annually. Now, if you look at the contribution of Pusa Basmati 1121 alone, and Pusa Basmati varieties, all varieties put together, uh, the, the contribution is almost 95% of the total export earning of 33,000 crores. Roughly 28,000 crores comes from the IRI variety. So you can see the impact of this uh, variety on the farmer's livelihood and also on the forex uh, earning. If you have just 0.5% uh, or 1% of this total earning plowed back into the research system, something that we don't have at this time as a mechanism, I think uh, the single technology like uh, Basmati varieties can meet entire expenses of entire research institutes. For example, IRI total budget is roughly uh, 600 crores annually, 
But if you take one uh, percent of thirty-three thousand crores, you get uh, almost thirty-three hundred crores, which is a huge amount, uh, uh, you know, to sustain the research program and come out with a better uh, technology. So eleven twenty-one uh, was uh, a hit, and the major region for its uh, popularity was its uh, long grain and cooking. The length of grain and cooking of eleven twenty-one goes on to almost twenty-five millimeters. And that, that is what it brings very high volume expansion and more uh, amount of rice per unit of cooked rice. So uh, after 1121, it is still is popular variety. Uh, the, the major problem with 1121 were that it was uh, a semi-tall type, it was prone to lodging, and it started suffering badly from a disease called Bacani disease, which is uh, caused by Zibrella physicori, a fungal disease where uh, the plants which are infected with the fungus, they grow tall. And uh, anything which is, uh, you know, uh, different from the rest of the population. Uh, so these plants are tall, they look different. Bakane is a Japanese word. And uh, this means, uh, Bakane means uh, a fool, a person, a fool person. So a plant which is tall in a population of semi-tall plants, it looks different, odd, and therefore the name was given to this disease as Bacane disease. Uh, we are working intensively on this uh, as well. Now, uh, after the, uh, you know, 1121, our major focus uh, turned towards uh, research program on uh, incorporating resistance to bacterial blight in Pusa Basmati 1 because Pusa Basmati 1 was very popular, but it went out of cultivation primarily because of susceptibility to bacterial blight. Uh, we uh, had a joint program with uh, National Research Center on Plant, uh, Plant Biotechnology, now National Institute of Plant Biotechnology, headed by Dr. N. K. Singh, who is live on the program. Uh, Dr. Uh, Trilochan Mahapatra, our current uh, Director General, uh, was a very strong supporter and collaborator of this program. And uh, it was uh, he who started the first molecular breeding program in the country provided strong support and our students worked on combining the resistant genes for bacterial leaf blight, that is XA13 and XA21, two genes. They were transferred through marker-assisted backcross breeding in the background of Pusa Basmati 1. And we released a new variety called Improved Pusa Basmati 1. Also, it is known as Pusa uh, 1460. So this variety, uh, had a complete resistance to bacterial leaf blight, and it had essentially all the same quality characteristics as Pusa Basmati 1. So this is uh, often described as the first product of molecular breeding uh, in the country uh, as far as Basmati rice is concerned, and perhaps the first in the crops except one or two cases which happened the collaborative program with the Crisat, the downy mildew resistant hybrids are formulated. HSP 67 improved was developed with uh, HAU and ACSAT collaboration a little earlier. But after that, this was the first variety that came uh, out for cultivation. Uh, after that, uh, we developed another variety called Pusa Basmati 1401. 1401 has uh, a little longer duration than 1121. It has about 150 days duration, but uh, it's a dwarf variety, uh, semi dwarf. Uh, very sturdy, doesn't floss, and its quality is superb, very high aroma. And the yield levels are almost uh, 30 quintals per acre. So that's something hard to uh, believe in case of basmati rice, as high as in any non-basmati rice variety. Mm -hmm. Then in 2013, we uh, released another uh, dwarf uh, and uh, early maturing variety of basmati rice, that is Pusa Basmati uh, 1509. 1509 has got uh, uh, 1509 has got uh, uh, a duration of 120 days, uh, seed to seed maturity, as against 145 days in Pusa Basmati 1121. And uh, therefore, its per day productivity is very high, and the cooking quality parameters are exactly identical to Pusa Basmati 1121. Same length, same volume expansion, and so on. There's a question from Rahul, and Rahul says that is it the soil factor affects basmati rice production and yield, uh, aroma, and to what extent soil quality is important? Uh, it's a very important question, and this is one of the basis for getting the geographical indication. 
uh, when we say geographical indication is granted to the product where the quality is determined by the environment in which they are grown. The moment the, the, the material is taken outside this environment, the, you will not get the same quality. And when we talk of environment, environment is a, a collective uh, factors, not only soil, it also has the environmental temperature, the water quality, soil quality, these factors are extremely important and including the soil uh, microbiome, uh, which plays a very important role in determining the quality of produce. Many of these factors have not been so well characterized in terms of their contribution, but certainly they have an important role because you get, uh, uh, you know, the best quality rice produced from the Radun Valley. Uh, certain areas in Haryana, for example, if you go to Saraudi region, you get excellent quality that comes. So there are factors in soil that attributes to it, but the precise impact of this individual factor is yet to be deciphered. So much so that I will tell you that uh, we had, along with Dr. N. K. Singh, we visited in UK 2008. And uh, um, there was a question asked that when you are saying that your rice, basmati rice is protected under geographical indication, one of the requirements for GI is that you should be able to trace the produce to the place of origin, uh, even to the extent of which farmer feels a particular bag of rice has been produced. So that kind of traceability is essential. And they were trying to, you know, they were working that if they can prepare a complete soil map, in terms of uh, you know the nutrient profiles of the soil and then you match that profile with the basmati grain quality uh, in terms of nutrients so if the nutrient profile of the grain matches with the nutrient profile of the soil you can use this as a parameter for traceability so those are the kinds of things that are being uh, investigated but very important it does play a very important uh, uh, role in determining the quality uh, so, GPV se kya ho kahani se? Okay. I was just trying to look at the questions that are coming so that I can address them uh, simultaneously. So, pardon me for. Uh, if there is any question to be addressed. In your opinion, how agriculture, particularly plant biotechnology, can play a crucial role in such pandemic crisis in, uh, in the future is a, a, a question that has been asked. And I would like to advise uh, Sushil uh, to see on the um, uh, you know YouTube uh, um, three uh, interviews that have been uh, given by one of our topmost virologists, Dr. Bernwald who talks about corona and also related issues and how we can address this. Uh, biotechnology does play a very, very important uh, role. Uh, this particular virus is a plant, uh, the animal uh, human system virus that has created havoc. There are a number of uh, viral diseases that uh, are equally devastating as far as plants are concerned. But when plants die, nobody really notices it. But if you must have seen in case of uh, uh, you know, lady's finger, uh, okra, you have aloe vein mosaic virus. In case of uh, mung bean, you have aloe vein mosaic virus. These are the diseases. In case of soya bean, and many of these diseases can be uh, addressed through biotechnological intervention. As a matter of fact, only by biotechnological interventions, because for many of these diseases, we don't have genetic resources and the variation that is available within. Uh, the cultivated species or wild species so that these problems can be solved. So biotechnology has a very important role. We can have a specific uh, presentation on the role of biotechnology in Indian agriculture, maybe at uh, later stage. Uh, any multi-disease tolerant rice variety to be launched? Uh, a question from Puneet. Uh, this is one of our major program and Dr. N. K. Shing had a big program on uh, QTL2 variety. And the major focus on this program was, you know, to combine the uh, quantitative trait loci for uh, uh, abiotic stress tolerance and also now with the biotic stress tolerance 
to come out with the multiple disease and uh, insect resistance and also abiotic stress tolerance variety. In our Basmati breeding program, now we have got uh, products with four gene parameters, two genes for bacterial blight, two genes for blast, and further we are working on brown plant hopper, on bacane, on salinity stress tolerance, on drought tolerance. So all these things are going to be combined ultimately in the important lead varieties uh, that that's what our focus is. Now, uh, uh, continuing with uh, what I said, 1509 we developed and then 1509 has become very popular. This uh, year, last year, the area planted to 1509 was about uh, 0.7 million hectare and it is replacing 1121 in big way. This crop season also, there is a much uh, higher demand of seed for uh, 1509 as compared to 1121. The 1509 is an opportunity uh, a, a window of one month between rice and wheat crop and this also addresses the problem of uh, extra burning because you get one month time to manage the extra and also particularly those farmers who wants to take up uh, a crop between rice and wheat or uh, a, a crop uh, a different crop system like uh, some farmers I know they go for uh, rice followed by uh, potato followed by chili and this kind of cropping system per hectare brings about 4 to 5 lakhs rupees of uh, return to uh, farmers. So the many farms who grow potato, they grow uh, 1509 and followed by uh, potato cultivation with very high profitability ratio. So uh, this 1509 and then our major focus has been, so one of the important factors I'd like to, I'd like to talk uh, to you about is, you know, in recent years, passed from 2018, 16, uh, 16 onwards, the European Union, which is one of the uh, biggest importer of basmati rice, about uh, 6,000 crores rupees annually, we export to uh, European Union. They have made their import uh, very, very stringent with respect to pesticide residue. And with respect to uh, tricycle as well, the residue limit has been brought down to 0 0.01 ppm. So uh, that would mean that if there is one milligram of uh, tricyclazole in 100 kilogram of rice, uh, the samples will be, the consignment will be rejected. So there was a chaos in the rice industry, uh, how to address this problem because uh, uh, tricyclazole is a fungicide which is very extensively used. It is very effective uh, and also economic uh, uh, fungicides and therefore farmers sometimes two times, three times they spray without taking proper kind of uh, precautions and the residue is bound to come in that situation. And therefore we initiated a, a breeding program uh, on uh, combining the resistance to uh, blast diseases. And one of our focus was that in the background of Pusa Basmati 1, if we can combine all the major blast resistant genes like uh, PIZ5, PIZ, PIB, PETA, PI1, PI2, PIKH and so on. So we had a project with Dr. T.R. Sarma again from National Institute of Plant Biotechnology, uh, who is currently Deputy Director General Craft Sciences at ICR headquarters. And this was a NAIP funded project in which we created isogenic lines for major blast resistant genes in the background of Pusa Basmati 1. So this carries now one gene pyramid, two gene pyramid, three gene pyramids, up to seven gene pyramids. And one of this line has been released for commercial cultivation as Pusa Basmati 1637 which has got uh, blast resistant genes PI9. And this PI9 provides complete resistance at seedling stage and also to neck blast. So this is a, a big lead that happened. And after that, uh, this was done in 2016. 2017, we released two more varieties, Pusa Basmati 1728, uh, which is improved version of Pusa 1401 combining resistance to bacterial blight, XA13, XA21 gene. And uh, uh, we also improved 1121 for resistance to bacterial blight and the new variety Pusa Basmati 1718 carrying XA13, XA21 gene has been uh, released for commercial cultivation. And uh, there is a substantial replacement of 1121 by Pusa Basmati 1718. It has duration wise, it is same, same quality, but a complete resistance to bacterial blight. It also has got very sturdy stem, no lodging, and uh, the yields are uh, higher than 1121. So these are the major development in terms of varieties in uh, integrating the molecular breeding program. Uh, but the basic research on understanding the, the 
the genetics of quality traits, which earlier it was done by classical genetic analysis, and later on, quite a few students with Dr. N. K. Singh, Amravati is one of them, Rakesh another one, they worked on mapping QTLs for Basmati quality traits. And uh, uh, this, again, now we understand in terms of genetic location, physical location of the genes, which chromosomes they are present, what are the markers, and using those, the breeding programs are now much more equipped to combine the quality with the uh, uh, high yield uh, background. Uh, there is a question from Manoj Bisnoi. He is asking that is there any variety that may be replacement of 1121 and 2511 and 1509 for Rajasthan, especially uh, Kota region? Uh, Manoj, uh, uh, I'm I'm sorry to say that. Uh, uh, Rajasthan Kota region is not part of geographical indication for basmati rice. So there cannot be any official recommendation for cultivation of basmati rice for that region. Uh, but as I said, 2511 that we call it Pusa Sugan 5 has been very popular in Bundi and Kota region it has been cultivated. And the new varieties which have come up, like I said, for 1121 improved version is uh, Pusa Basmati 1780, which has got resistance to bacterial life blight. That can be uh, a, a replacement, but uh, of course there cannot be the produce thereof. See, when we say geographical indication, uh, it defines the area of cultivation of a particular uh, variety. Uh, uh, for example, basmati, all varieties of basmati rice. Uh, it does not mean that the farmers outside GI area cannot cultivate that. It only means that if the farmers outside GI area, they will cultivate it. The produce thereof cannot be sold with the brand Basmati. And this is extremely important as far as the national and international law of geographical indication that GI, if it has to be honored uh, in uh, overseas, other countries, it must be first honored within country of origin. If we do not honor within country of origin, it will not be honored uh, outside the country. Uh, it is important to honor GI because uh, this is a premium commodity which brings 33,000 crores of foreign exchange earning every year. And therefore, we must restrict the cultivation uh, into the GI areas. So there is a question from Srinivasa Rao, hybrid millet is there in process. Uh, we will have some uh, discussion on that maybe later. Let us today's question be focused on basmati rice so that we are uh, uh, on to what we are dealing with today's topic. Uh, I didn't get, uh, okay, so PPP on basmati rice, this is from Devendra Raghuvansi. I think he is asking about the public private partnership on basmati rice. And now I would like to say here that. Uh, in IRI and ICR have got a very open policy and all the varieties rice of basmati rice that we have developed uh, they are available for uh, public private partnership through licensing we have license 1509 1718 1728 1637 and uh, right now we have got more than 100 licenses who have taken licenses from us we provide the breeder seed every year and there is certain amount of license fee which is to be paid by the licensee and a recurring royalty of 2.5% on the varieties. So this is a model which is working very well, and it is because of this partnership that we are able to produce a large quantity seed and reach the farmers. Otherwise, it would not be possible for IRA to, to, to produce the required quantity of for 2 million hectare area. I hope, uh, Devendra, I have addressed your uh, query. If you have any more, please feel free to ask. Uh, Satyapal, uh, the question, have any replacement of basmati standard rice with non-basmati aromatic rice? Have any replacement of basmati standard rice with non-basmati aromatic rice? The question is not quite clear to me what actually you mean. Uh, but uh, when we talk of non-basmati uh, non -basmati aromatic rice, we talk about mostly the salt grain aromatic rices. And which I said, uh, there are at least 200 salt grain aromatic rice varieties where the grain is shorter in length. They are highly aromatic and their quality is superb. And many of such salt grain aromatic rice like Govindo Bhog from West Bengal has been protected under geographical indication. 
and Kala Namak from Eastern UP is also protected as geographical in this case. We have initiated research program to also improve their productivity like we have done in case of basmati rice. So here also we are trying to uh, see that their height is reduced and uh, their productivity is improved. Uh, there is a need to develop uh, what is called uh, yeah, uh, the, the, there is a need to improve, uh, uh, you know, the productivity of the short grain aromatic rice also. We have done some work on Kalanamak particularly, and Kalanamak height is now reduced to almost 80 centimeters, while the uh, the original height of Kalanamak is 1.5 meter, uh, with high productivity of 5 tons per hectare. Uh, what is required is that many of these now have been protected as geographical indication. The government is having a focus on one district, one product. So many of these specialty rices, they have to be brought into one district, one product and promoted for export. Unless people come to know about this in the overseas market, they will not develop uh, taste and affinity. So somebody has to put uh, bigger efforts. Uh, there is a question that Northeast India has lots of rice diversity. Is there any breeding work carried out in rice using Northeastern local variety? Very good question. And there have been intensive breeding efforts in past also we know as ARC, Assam rice collections. More than 12,000 uh, uh, varieties from Assam regions were collected and they have been cataloged and used in breeding program. Dr. N. K. Singh in his national process project has focused uh, intensively on collecting the land races and wild species diversity of India, including the northeastern uh, region. And one of my students, Bhuvaneshwari, has recently worked on improving this uh, uh, Chahao Paritan, the uh, variety, aromatic rice variety from Manipur, which is very popular there. So we are trying to improve the, uh, the quality as well as uh, we have characterized the uh, biochemical parameters, the anthocyanin uh, content, and uh, the antioxidant potential of Chahao Paritan, which is a specialty rice and reduce its plant height to increase the productivity. So we are working on that line. Another question comes on improvement of seed yield or seed setting in BBT 5204 under late planting cold tolerance. So please, if any chemical or growth regulators are there, please suggest. I'm afraid I will not be able to answer as far as the chemicals and growth regulators are concerned. BBT 5204, as you know, is one of the most uh, premium quality uh, uh, rice variety in uh, non-aromatic segment and a number of institutions in the country are working uh, on improving BPT 5204. It has been improved for drought tolerance. It has been improved for uh, and dhan, DRR dhan 50 has been released. Dr. N. K. Singh participated QTL to variety program. From there it came and then our own group, Dr. Gopala Krishnan has come out with BPT 5204 version as PUSA 1850, which combines three genes for resistance to uh, blast diseases. And uh, Indian Institute of Rice Research has come out with uh, uh, improved uh, Samba Masuri, which has XA513 and XA213 genes for resistance to uh, bacterial blight. But your question is with respect to cold tolerance, I think we will have to uh, look into the source material. There are certain Genetic resources identified for coal tolerance from Srinagar. One of my students, uh, Asif Shikari, is working there. And coal tolerance, particularly for seedling stage, it is a problem. But you have referred to late stage coal tolerance uh, if, if uh, that happens. Uh, because uh, when it gets into coal tolerance, the penkill exertion is badly affected in BPT 5204. And that limits the production. So that can be a challenging research uh, uh, problem. Uh, so uh, then uh, the next question is, uh, uh, the from Dheeras uh, says, how long the rice should be stored so that uh, during hulling the uh, broken proportion is uh, uh, reduced? So again, a very important question, you see the breakage in rice depends on several factors. The one is that uh, when the crop is matured and it is kept in field for a longer period, for one or the other reason it is not timely harvested, then during night temperatures fall down, during day temperature goes up, and this high and low temperature exposure of grain, if crop has lost, uh, all these factors uh, lead to what is called uh, 
high broken percentage. Then uh, generally, you know, uh, the storage per se will not improve the uh, head rise recovery, but head rise recovery important factor is handling of the post harvest produce and in field conditions, how it is uh, uh, harvested and processed is important. Uh, one of the effective ways for reducing uh, head rise for increasing head rise recovery and reducing the breakage in rice is uh, to go for par boiling. So if you do par boiling, par boiling means if you boil the paddy, either uh, you boil in uh, boiling water or can be uh, heated with the steam uh, steaming process. Also, many uh, commercial companies they do that. So if we do that, then what happens during uh, you know the grain formation and during maturity and harvesting if there is a crack in the rice grain inside when you boil the paddy the starch is melted and then this gets gelatinized and the cracks which are developing in the grain those cracks they get filled so when the parboiled rice is uh, subjected to milling the uh, broken percentage is drastically uh, reduced so this is standard practice particularly in case of basmati rice 75 percent of basmati exported uh, is all 100% uh, it is uh, parboiled rice that goes to Middle East. Only 25% is raw rice that is consumed in other destinations. So that's the effective way to reduce the parboiling in rice, uh, to reduce the breakage um, in rice. Uh, Kiran says that can we expand the concept of uh, NPT in basmati rice breeding? Yes, uh, uh, very much one of the ways uh, in many of the new plant type, we have uh, high grain number. And uh, one of the populations that we developed uh, and we used for mapping duct and casing group, uh, we had NPT 11, new plant type 11 crossed with Pusa Basmati 1. And from this population, we identified a major QTL on chromosome 4, which increases grain number by, by almost 20%. So integrating those QTLs will help in improving the productivity in this. Uh, question is, Koi uh, Basmati may new variety kab launch hogi? Kripiya batayin. Abhi jo nai variety abhi tak aai hain, us mein 1718 hai aur 1728 hai, 1637 in ke baare mein bataya. Lekin kuch nai kisme abhi hamari aane wali hain, jisme ki Pusha Basmati 1509 mein Blast or bacterial blight killer system genes डाले गए हैं उसी तरह से 1121 और 1401 का भी improvement आ रहा है एक दो साल का समय इसमें लगेगा इसके साथ साथ कुछ हम लोग बासमती राइस की ऐसी किस्में विकसित कर रहे हैं जिसमें कि herbicide tolerance है उसको direct seeding में सीधी बिजाई के लिए हम प्रयोग कर सकते हैं उसमें खरपतवार का नियंत्रण बहुत effective तरीके से हो सकता है uh, Make efforts to add the area under GI Basmati in Chhattisgarh. Here we having a lot of evidence of Basmati rice cultivation. Chhattisgarh, as I said in the beginning, that uh, in in whole of India there are large number of sort grain aromatic rices, but they are not Basmati. Chhattisgarh is uh, blessed with a large number of sort grain aromatic rices, and their number is quite high, and they are excellent grain and cooking quality. My urge and request from the state and the university would be that uh, you should make attempt to get them protected under geographical indication and develop a niche market for them and have their own GI area rather than extending area of GI for Basmati rice because the, one of the most important factors associated with geographical indication is that uh, uh, there should be a heritage and history of cultivation. So when it comes to history of cultivation, the Basmati rice history of cultivation is uh, uh, limited to these seven states where GI is granted, not beyond that. And that's one of the reasons. For example, if you say today to someone that uh, I have a Basmati rice from Madhya Pradesh, people will not perceive it as uh, that Basmati rice can be produced in Madhya Pradesh. There is no history of Basmati rice cultivation. When we talk of history, it is not 15 years, 20 years. The history goes back to 100 years, 150 years, and so on and so forth. So we should put efforts in developing GI for the local aromatic rices, which are adored by the local community and very popular in that area. Uh, Sanket Rathi, your comment on glycemic index and basmati rice. So, but general audience, I would like to say that glycemic index refers to 
the uh, digestibility of the rice when you consume. And you know that when you consume raw rice, uh, then you feel hungry very fast. But if you take parboiled rice, then it stays very long in your stomach. It doesn't get digested quickly. And that is where, you know, many of the areas, the people who work hard, uh, there has been a co-evolution of the consumption pattern of parboiled rice. If you start from Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra, the entire coastal belt, Urisha, West Bengal, and part of Bihar where parboiled rice is uh, highly uh, liked by the uh, people. Uh, as far as basmati rice is concerned, there is no uh, uh, variety as such which has low GI, but this is one of our major research agenda currently to develop basmati rice varieties with low GI and uh, we are trying to first identify the genetic uh, factors that are responsible for GI. Some companies have been marketing basmati rice, uh, branding them as diabetic rice, uh, uh, but uh, this is primarily by the processing uh, interventions where you can, uh, the parboiling is one intervention. I said, if you do parboiling, then the digestibility of rice is reduced. It takes longer time to get digested in your stomach and therefore the release of sugar is very steady and slow and the sudden peak of sugar doesn't reach in the blood and therefore it is uh, branded as low glycemic index rice around 56-57%. Some of the varieties of non-basmati rice like uh, Lalat BPT5204 itself have been categorized into low GI category around 52-53%. Uh, percent, but in Basmati we are working on this particular aspect. Uh, Arnab Guha, how is KRS4 performing? KRS4 is a hybrid rice, non-Basmati hybrid rice developed from Mandya Station of uh, Karnataka State, US Bangalore. Uh, this is a good hybrid, uh, but uh, the only problem that we have with most of the public sector bred hybrid is that there is no organized large-scale seed production. And unless this happens with the participation of private sector, uh, the presence of public sector bred hybrid on the ground on farmer's field is very uh, less. We have about, uh, say, close to 3 million hectare area under hybrid rice cultivation, but almost 99% of this is from uh, private sector hybrid. Uh, Rajesh's uh, question is, uh, is there any program on nutritional fortification? Uh, yes, pretty much we are working my colleague Harita, I forgot her name to tell in the group when I mentioned, Harita is working extensively on uh, iron, zinc, uh, fortification of uh, rice, mapping genes and QTLs for this, and also for uh, some work on pro-vitamin A that we were doing earlier by transgenic route, but that work uh, on golden rice is now uh, on hold. Uh, but iron and zinc fortification is uh, uh, going on and uh, one of the donor line in zinc that we have identified is uh, having uh, this is karup nail uh, which has got uh, zinc level as high as 49 uh, 39 to 40 ppm that's pretty high against 24 ppm which is the minimum standard that has been fixed om gupta is there any program going on developing rice varieties for uh, diabetic people i think i have answered these questions we have a strong program on this now there is australian machine that has been developed uh, which is called gut analyzer, and this machine is uh, uh, able to fast analyze the number of samples for uh, glycemic uh, rice. Uh, Donald James, good evening. Uh, the question is, what will be the future direction which needs immediate attention in rice uh, crop improvements? Uh, well, so this is, uh, I think uh, many of these points I have been referring to we have to manage very effectively the biotic stresses. Still, we have not been able to do much on uh, brown plant hopper resistance. That's very important uh, insect that has to be tackled. There are upcoming diseases which have, uh, uh, in fact, uh, become very serious now, which includes brown spot, false smart, uh, bacane. These are upcoming diseases. So many of these biotic stresses have to be managed very effectively so that yield reduction is minimized. Blast, for example, the neck blast is such a severe disease both in Basmati and uh, non-Basmati that many times the yield losses goes up to 60 to 70 to 80 percent and whatever production comes its quality is very uh, bad. So these things and then of course among abiotic stresses uh, the drought tolerance is one very important factor, submergence tolerance 
and all these areas are being intensively worked out. Hybrid rice, uh, uh, we have been working since 1989. So 1989, so uh, it's almost 30 years. But the kind of progress which should have happened has not happened in case of hybrid rice. It's still our adoption is only uh, around 5% uh, of the total area is 44 million hectare. Out of that, only 3 million hectare is planted to hybrid rice. So uh, total hybrid seed produces about 44,000 tons. Uh, major efforts have been made by private sectors, including Bayer, Corteva, and many other companies. Uh, we need to focus on this uh, again to enhance the area under hybrid rice uh, so that uh, the productivity can be uh, improved. Uh, Nagaraja, uh, the question is, with the use of GA3, we can enhance the flag leaf emergence like that. Any other are there under coal? tolerance okay so this question was uh, with respect to uh, the coal tolerance question that was asked earlier that uh, many areas when the coal tolerance happens because of coal tolerance we have uh, poor uh, emergence of panicle and that drastically reduces the uh, yield uh, whether GA3 can be used as effective tool for panicle emergence uh, GA3 application is used uh, as a commercial practice in hybrid rice seed production where we uh, spray GA3 for uh, increasing the exertion in the female line to have better hybrid seed production and that uh, does really work. But I don't think it will be a commercial practice for uh, you know um, productivity gain uh, as a solution to cold tolerance. This has to be addressed by genetic means. We have to identify the genes that are responsible for uh, conferring cold tolerance. What is their mechanism? One has to see whether GA3 can be a possible mechanism in that route, but external application on a large scale for commercial production may not be a good idea to uh, go for. Uh, Sachin question, it's very informative lecture. Thank you very much good quality low glycemic index rice examples. I have already said Arno Gupta, uh, the one is Lalat, another is Samba Masuri, improved Samba Masuri, these are under low glycemic conditions. Sangram, K Sri Lanka, he is one of our students from NIPB. Question is, what are the major metabolites uh, which distinguish Basmati and non-Basmati scented rice uh, varieties? I think it's a very pertinent question but uh, I have no answer at this point of time. This needs to be uh, done by metabolite fingerprinting of Basmati versus non-Basmati to identify these factors. Prolay uh, is from my group. He says, please explain our recent development on herbicide tolerance rise. I briefly mentioned herbicide, uh, as you know, that uh, uh, weeds are major culprit in uh, rice production system. As a matter of fact, rice cultivation under transplanted conditions evolved because of uh, weed problem and water is the biggest herbicide after transplanting if you flood the field uh, for say four five centimeter of water depth for 15 days then weeds are completely killed therefore uh, the this practice evolved of transplanted rice but now in the areas like punjab haryana western up water table is depleting very fast and uh, transplanted rice, uh, uh, as we know that, you know, the consumption of rice per kilogram of rice produced, you use about 3,000 to 4,000 liters of water. That's pretty high. It is uh, important to develop technologies which can save water. And one of the very effective technology in this direction can be uh, direct seeded rice. But when we come to DSR, the major culprit is weed because management of weeds under direct seeded rice is a big challenge. You cannot go for manual weeding because manual Manual weeding is going to be, uh, what does Asis say? Uh, the manual weeding is going to be very expensive per acre. Weeding cost will be 3,000 to 4,000 rupees. Now, we uh, developed uh, a herbicide tolerant rice through mutation breeding program. And now this herbicide tolerance genes we have transferred into genetic background of uh, Pusa Basmati 1509, 1121. This was a DBT project led by Dr. Mahapatra where we identified uh, a mutant in the background of Nagina 22. And this mutant was named Robin uh, because Dr. Robin from TNAU was the one who identified first 
unfortunately we lost him of brain hemorrhage in one of the rice workshop three years back excellent scientist outstanding scientist in his name this mutant is named as robin we use this mutant in breeding program and transfer the gene into basmati varieties now new generation basmati rice varieties with herbicide tolerance are available they are under evaluation and uh, under direct feeded conditions they can help uh, reduce water requirement and also drudgery of uh, labor Arno Gupta, Achyut, are you working on hybrid in basmati rice? If so, when it is expected, how much is the yield advantage? Uh, well, Achyut, I must say that uh, uh, IARI was the first institution in the country which came out with the first basmati rice variety in hybrid segments. So our first hybrid was released in 2001 called Pusa Rice Hybrid and Pusa RS10, for which we signed MOU with at least 20 Uh, companies they were producing and still this hybrid is under market and now we have new generation basmati hybrids with resistance to bacterial blight and blast which may take another 2 to 2 to 3 years my colleague dr gopal krishna is working intensively on this satyapal 10 to 15 minutes left okay all right so i will just go quickly to the questions which have been raised and uh, then maybe we will have another time to interact uh sanket uh, comments on gupta uttam can you help in developing dwarf variety of chinur so i think uh, we already have made some crosses with the dwarf genetic resources and we should be able to do that sorry status of gm rice in india uh, not much is being done uh, one of the reasons is that you know uh, the general acceptance and the uh, the policy uh it is framework is developing and hopefully now with the new tools and technologies of developing uh, a specific products like genome editing which uh, may not be regulated uh, like the transgenics it will be possible to come out quickly with the uh, gm rice addressing a specific issues which are not uh, addressed or solved by the conventional breeding program or molecular breeding program kabin uh, mehdi Medhi, thank you so much, sir, for a very important information. My pleasure. Uh, so, can you explain the current status of research and production on basmati rice in south portion of the country, especially Andhra Pradesh? So, I think I have addressed this question in relation to Chhattisgarh. Andhra Pradesh is also not part of geographical indication, so no basmati rice can be cultivated there. Uh, it can be cultivated, but it cannot be called as basmati rice. Okay, I can see uh, Ashok Singh, who is also online, is one of the senior forest service officer, who was uh, at IRI scientists were doing extremely well in West Bengal. Kirti Mitlais, Durga Prasad, why the government agency are not so interesting for production of hybrid rice like private companies? A very pertinent question. Our major seed uh, production brings like National Seed Corporation. uh they have to have trained manpower and infrastructure uh major uh, lacuny is the trained uh, manpower and hybrid rice production is very committed uh, job i think uh, i don't mind even you know if there is a good partnership the private sector and the hybrids developed in public sector are taken by private sector multiplied and made available to the farmers that will address the question uh i can also see dr gp singh Uh, director indian institute of wheat and barley research outstanding wheat breeder whose variety as the 3086 is uh, ruling the roast almost cultivated in uh, close to 5 million hectare area he is with us choudhury naren singh and i think we can invite uh, all these people to address you know in subsequent lecture so that community at large is benefited Chaudhary Naren Singh, question information about black rice, and I think I talked about Chao Paratan. One of my PhD students has worked on this, and the very good uh, uh, outcome is there. Uh, Ramana, is there any breeding program going against root not nematode, which is more problematic in nursery, especially in basmati rice? Yes, and we have very important program on this. Our colleague Dr. Umar Rao from Nematology Division and Ranjit. Uh, they have done a screening of large set of germplasm including wild species land races and potential donors have been identified mapping population developed and uh, soon we will have marker assisted breeding initiated for resistance to nematode 
Namin, uh, how can we differentiate genuine Basmati varieties uh, from other? So there is a, uh, of course, it is not uh, feasible for individuals to do that, but uh, uh, for authentication, there is a DNA uh, uh, fingerprinting kit available with a set of eight microsatellite markers, which is extensively used in the industry, which can differentiate uh, uh, a variety from other variety and in a given consignment, how much is the uh, uh, contribution or proportion of each variety that is possible. Uh, but even simple cooking test can help in uh, distinguishing the varieties and admixtures if there is any. Very informative lecture. Thanks. Very informative. I think we are coming very close to the uh, end of this session. Do you think will hamper rice production in our country? COVID situation, whether it is likely to rain or sing, my better half, we could ask the question anytime. But uh, yes, uh, in COVID situation, what is how the rice production is going to be affected in the country? And we know that, you know, uh, almost 70% uh, of contribution to public distribution system in rice comes from Punjab, Haryana, and Western UP, these states. And any setback to this state for rice production in coming Kharif season will have a direct impact on our PDS supply. And entire labor for transplanting in these states comes from Eastern UP and Bihar, the migratory labor. I hope the situations will ease out after 3rd May and the government should make special efforts to run special trains uh, uh, like Shramik trains or something like that to uh, slowly mobilize the labor from uh, Bihar and Eastern UP to Punjab, Haryana, maintaining the uh, isolation distances, maybe one train, uh, limited number. You want to confront me for Okay, I just wanted to address uh, all the questions that are there. So I think it's still one and a half month time left, and if there is a systematic efforts made to mobilize laborers uh, to bring it available, look at isolation once the labor arrives here in Punjab, Haryana, Western UP, and farmers field, Isolation will not be a problem. And rice transplanting is one operation which is always done by isolation. So when people stand in the field for transplanting, they always maintain a distance of uh, three meter by procedure. Uh, each person will move with a strip of about one and a half meter or so. So that isolation is maintained, it will not be a big problem. But the movement of labor has to be facilitated. Otherwise, the other option would be to go for direct seeded rice. Uh, where you know we can um, do away with the labor, but direct seeded rice has to be uh, done before uh, 30th of uh, June, before onset of uh, monsoon. Once the rain comes, then DSR will not be possible. So it has to be done in month of uh, June, and farmers have to have a special training and guidance for managing DSR rice. It is not so uh, a little uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, technical, and uh, we are trying to provide the guidance uh, for that. Uh, CM Parihar, is there any difference in the performance of basmati and non-basmati rice hybrids under conservation agriculture practices? Uh, well, uh, not much has been done as far as conservation agriculture in rice, but now with the technologies like, uh, you know, uh, herbicide tolerance rice, the DSR will become a practice. We have had experience of our basmati varieties 1121-1509 grown under uh, uh, DSR. And uh, their yield levels are as good as under transplanted condition if crop is managed well for the weeds. I can see Professor Umesh K. Reddy, and he is with us from uh, US. Uh, his uh, suggestion is a lot of genes are currently uh, known for abiotic stress. It is important to deploy them in uh, cultivars using genome uh, editing. Uh, that's right, and uh, we have uh, tried to address, as I said earlier, uh, many of these genes for drought tolerance, at least uh, seven major QTLs have been identified, and they are being incorporated through marker-assisted breeding, and likewise for abiotic stresses. As far as genome editing is concerned, we have initiated a program in RISE uh, with the help of uh, um, uh, Germans, where we are uh, trying to edit the genes like XA13 uh, and many of these uh, genes uh, and sweet genes that are responsible for bacterial blight resistance. For drought tolerance, all the genes that are mapped uh, in the rice land races and uh, uh, germplasm, 
the genes are not uh, uh, yet cloned and characterized. And for genome editing, we must have the uh, information uh, of the gene, uh, then only we can take up editing project. But there are other genes which are in the drought tolerance, or salinity tolerance, abiotic stress tolerance pathways. Uh, they can be addressed through genome editing, but uh, one has to see really uh, what, how big uh, those uh, are impact-wise. It has to be first characterized, and then uh, editing can be taken. But our first priority in editing is uh, well-characterized genes in rice. For example, the gene 1 for grain number gene, GF3 for grain size, GW5 for grain weight, and all the genes for bacterial bite resistance, which are pretty well characterized. To begin with, we are going to have the uh, these uh, traits incorporated, and then we move on to the complex uh, problems like abiotic stresses for addressing them through genome editing. Uh, I, I would uh, request like other questions can be mailed uh, to me, and then I will uh, address them uh, through mail. I am very happy to see uh, Professor Umesh Reddy, who has joined this program from West Virginia State University. I was in his lab for uh, a brief uh, assignment in the Human Resource Development pro Program, and it was a great pleasure working with Umesh. He is one of the most outstanding scientists and publishing in the area of uh, uh, genome-wide association mapping. His work on cucurbits is particularly of uh, very high standards and also on cotton. Uh, Arita says very informative lectures. Dr. N. K. Singh, excellent overview. Thank you, Dr. Singh. It's all because of you and your association. Srikant Dhamma, excellent talk. Respected sir, we are happy to hear you live and leadership. So thank you very much, Srikant, for your good words. What is your message which you would like to address to rice grower? I think partly I address the coming Kharif season, nursery uh, sowing has to start towards uh, you know, the uh, third fortnight of uh, uh, the, the second uh, fortnight of uh, May, from around 20th May, nursery will start uh, sowing. Transplanting is a major uh, challenge, whether we will have sufficient labor or not. So uh, the direct seed rice can be one option. The farmers can uh, think of this. It's a little technical, about 6 kilograms of seed rate per uh, acre. We have been very successful in raising the direct seed rice. Only thing is weed control, first spray of pendimethylene within 72 hours of sowing, and then after 18 days, go for nominee gold. If these two things are done and weeds are managed effectively, then DSR can be very, very successful. Under this kind of crisis of non-availability of labor, DSR can be a good uh, uh, technology to use. Well, uh, please express your views on aerobic rice and sustainable rice production. And uh, partly answered because once we have the technology to manage uh, the uh, weeds in direct seeded rice, aerobic rice is uh, basically, it is uh, growing rice like uh, wheat. Weed management is the only core issue and with herbicide tolerance rice, it should be possible to manage. Om says that during pandemic situation, COVID-19, what is your message to address to scientists? I think I have addressed this question. Uh, Akash Dutta is from Ajay Kohli lab from Iri. I'm glad to know that they are uh, with us. Nisha says that, uh, thank you very much for excellent lecture. Thank you, Nisha. Lalit, could you explain pleiotropic QTL genes for lodging and yield? So pleiotropy is also complex, lodging is also complex, and yield is also very complex trait. We have to really, in terms of quantitative trait loci, first we have to identify the QTLs, major effect QTLs, and the QTL by background uh, interactions, because a QTL put in different genetic backgrounds will have different uh, effects. So uh, this is one thing that has to be analyzed and some special kinds of mapping populations where complex interactions can be estimated and uh, they can be quantified in terms of their uh, interaction pattern. Then it will be possible to uh, you know, uh, address this issue. We can have detailed discussion on this uh, maybe some other time. I think that's the question, uh, last question I have on the roll and I think our time is up. I would like to say a big thank you to each one of you for 
uh, being with me uh, on this program and I hope uh, I have been able to address to some of these uh, questions. Uh, thank you very much and I'm sure we will have uh, another opportunity to interact very soon. Thank you all. Thank you very much. So I'm going to end this session. Thank you very much.